Thank you. <clears throat> thank you all very much. I want to thank my wife. I want to thank uh, Tom, Senator Hunt, Skip, <clears throat> Jeff. And uh, I see so many faces in this room that are my friends. It really makes you feel strong. My mama told me when I was a little boy that when another kid's making fun of you, it's because he's jealous. <laughs> well, the polls show that A.B. Swindell is losing this race. And he's going to lose this race. <laughs> he is so desperate, so desperate to hold on to his seat of power. And the Democratic leadership is so desperate to hang on to their 112 years of power that they will <coughs> stop at nothing. We have to stand up and we have to say no more. The people are sick and tired of this kind of mess. They will, <clears throat> they will not stand for it anymore. If you knew how many people have spoken to me, if you knew how many phone calls I have gotten, text messages, emails, Facebook messages, I don't know how in the world I will ever, ever, ever respond to all of them. I have so many Democrats who are, were committed A.B. Swindell supporters who are begging for my yard signs. <laughs> because they are absolutely incensed that someone would stoop so low that someone would go so far into the gutter because they are so scared of losing. He does not want to talk about his record. He does not want to talk about the five billion dollars in taxes that he has raised since he's been up there. He doesn't want to talk about the 1.1 billion dollar tax increase last summer in the middle of the recession, killing how many thousands of jobs here in Nash and Wilson County. He doesn't want to talk about that. He doesn't want to talk about the 3,000 teachers that he laid off with the budget last year. At the same time that they were voting to give scholarships to prisoners in the Department of Corrections so they can go to college. That's the kind of man that has been up there. I'm not talking about his character. He brought it up. I'll let the voters decide about his character. There you go. I want to talk about his record. Yeah. He won't debate me. Jeff, Garland, Betty Jo, how long did he stick around at Rose Hill last week? Not long at all. He was gone. Gone. <laughs> Saw me there and gone. <laughs> Wouldn't stay on the radio with me either. I'll let y'all be the judge. That's right. He knew what he was going to do. That's right. He knew that I had tried to reach his campaign and let him know that he was getting ready to make a big mistake. He knew that. He refused to meet with him. I have had a lot of time to reflect on this, ladies and gentlemen, and, and, and I'm going to talk about this issue for just a moment longer here, and I'll talk about it again when we get to Wilson, and then I'm not going to talk about it anymore because I want to talk about what's important in this race, not about some you know, case of who done it 20 years ago that I wasn't even there for. <laughs> My mother forwarded to me an email from a friend of hers. And it said, what the Lord leads you to, the Lord will lead you through. Amen. And as I reflected on that, it dawned on me very clearly that what I'm going through and what my family's going through is nothing compared to what many people go through. We've got veterans who lost limbs in Iraq and Afghanistan. 
We've got widows of military people. What I'm going through is nothing compared to that. I'm not fighting cancer. My wife's not fighting cancer. I haven't lost a child in a car wreck. That's nothing. I wasn't even there. <laughs> I'm not worried about what you guys think. And I'm not really worried about what people who don't know me think. I'm a little concerned that, to make sure they hear the truth. But as mad as you are about it, total strangers that I've met, when they, when they hear about it, even when they think maybe I did something that I didn't do, they're still mad about it. I mean, they go, I mean, they've been telling me in emails and messages, people I have no idea who they are. I mean, it says right there it was dismissed. What's this all about? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have just got to stand up. And we have got to go out there and spread the word like so many other people. I mean, I'm getting stories from Democrat friends of mine about how, how their wife has been on the phone and on the computer all day long telling people how outrageous this is. My wife and I know about some of them. And, and, and it's hard to hold back the tears when you hear them because it, it gets you right there. We have to stand up. We have to spread the word. We gotta make sure that people know the truth. And then we gotta get back to what this campaign is all about. I'm gonna be out there walking door to door this weekend because I'm not afraid of the truth. A.B. Swindell, I understand, was supposed to be at a fundraiser this morning in Wilson for Elaine Mar Marshall, a Democrat breakfast. I have many good friends in the Democratic Party now. <laughs> <laughs> Just got a text. A.B. Swindell is nowhere to be found. Uh, <laughs> Why do you think that was? Yeah. Made with a lawyer. <laughs> hey, Robert, you got that right. You got that right. And Neil, I want to tell you that Mr. Swindell, uh, Mr. Uh, Alvin B. Swindell, uh, certainly will be a defendant in the lawsuit, and he certainly will pay out of his pocket when this is all over with. Uh, you know, I wrote on my Facebook when I was a little hot. That um, back in the old days when a gentleman's honor and reputation was assaulted, That's right. he was challenged, the, the offender was challenged to a duel. I was born about 150, 200 years too late. <laughs> so I'm going to do the next best thing. <laughs> and I don't know how many years it'll take, but I will have my day in court. And Mr. Swindell will be a party, and he will pay, as will Mr. Uh, Young, isn't that his name, Tom? That is his yeah. name. And, uh, and the Democrat Party. And I suspect we'll have a lot of fun with that, finding out all about what they do behind closed doors, since the Democrat Party is the one that mailed that out. And Mr. Swindell will be held liable because of the statements that he made himself on the radio at the time where he refused to be on at the same time I, time I was, but I heard it with my own ears where he repeated these lies over and over again. I have never, ever been arrested for a drug charge. Never have I been arrested for a drug charge. And that is the lie that they're trying to sell because they don't want to talk about the truth. They don't want to talk about this campaign. And that's what this whole mess is about. So after I have victory on November the 3rd, I intend to go up to Raleigh and help Skip and Neil and the rest of the uh, Republican caucuses in both chambers elect this agenda. We are going to do a much better job of handling state government than A.B. Swindell ever dreamed of. A.B. Swindell has handled the truth about as well as he's handled state government. <laughs> and when we get elected on November the 3rd, and we are sworn in sometime around the end of January, is that right? 27. The work will begin. 
the work will begin. It will be a new day for North Carolina. It will be a new day for politics in North Carolina. We are going to change the tone. We are going to get it done. And we are going to show those career politicians who have nothing better to do than to sit around and spread lies and figure out how to keep collecting a paycheck. We're going to show them how it's done. I am a small business owner. I have no desire to sit in Raleigh one minute longer than is necessary. <laughs> I've got work to do. I've got a family to feed. I've got bills to pay. I have quarterly tax payments to make. <laughs> yes. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I really thank you all for being here. It, it means more to me and my wife than you could ever know. Dig deep, stand tall, we will win, and we will be vindicated. Thank you very much. Thank you.